Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Philosopher's Stones once again. We are going to do something a little... I say that. We're going to do something not so fucking different. And we're going to cover something way back in the ancient times. We're talking about ancient nuclear weapons possibly used in a lot of old ancient texts. And this part one of the series, I'm focusing on the Middle East. Specifically, the Hindu stuff. So the two major Sanskrit epics from ancient India are called the Mahabharata, which is where stuff from this episode will be taken from, and the Ramayana. I just wanted to read those because I don't want to sound like an ass when I'm pronouncing that shit. So a lot of this shit is going to be from the Bhagavad Gita. And I said that right because I looked it up. And I've heard that shit before quite a few times. Uh, it's, a, it's a story within those epics I mentioned earlier. So I know I said we were going to cover the Middle East, but I wanted to give a little background on the first recorded atomic nuclear device that we know of in our history, which was on July 16th, 1945. Codename Trinity was the first recorded nuclear device to be set off. Part of the Manhattan Project... Obviously orchestrated by the U.S. military, Dr. Oppenheimer was the lead on the atomic project and he was asked, was the Trinity bomb dropped in New Mexico the first ever atomic bomb? He answered, yes, in modern time. This bomb dropping took place in the New Mexico desert and the impact left a large green sheet of glass within the crater. On some science shit, sand turns into glass at 3,000 plus degrees or under insanely extreme force. Scientists named this glass Trinonite, but uh, previously people in the Middle East and Africa had been finding green glass under layers of sand and even on the surface level with no realistic explanation. The green glass is found all around another epicenter in a different location, Moheno Daro, Pakistan, which borders India. The civilization was found in ruins and had been crystallized. The green glass found connects uh, to this nuclear war, in my opinion. You know, the, the green glass is found in different places, so a nuclear war probably happened. 44 bodies were found and all 44 were tested. They weren't as decayed as they should be and were found with 50 times the radiation they should have had. Seems like a nuclear bomb dropped to me. A layer of radioactive ash covering a three-mile radius was found in Rajasthan, India. This research popped off because a very high rate of birth defects and cancer were being reported in the area. The civilization found here was obviously in ruins, but dates back to from 8,000 to 12,000 years ago. The blast that must have occurred would probably have destroyed the entire city and half a million people instantly. Etchings translated in temples nearby depicted a ray of light coming from the sky to destroy the city, and some people were praying to be spared from its destruction. Also, the bodies found were also not decaying properly. So, another correlation to the, the mother bodies found. They were covered in radiation, and a lot of them looked like it was instant death. Many people holding hands, unaware or anticipating the terror coming from the sky. That evil motherfucker, Oppenheimer, went live and quoted a phrase from the Bhagavad Gita, which was written in Sanskrit, which means he had to learn this shit to read it. This quote is quite alarming. Now I become death, the destroyer of worlds. You Darth Vader ass bitch. So here we get into the Bhagavad Gita, and it's several references to nuclear weaponry that is damn near more advanced than the present day nuclear warfare we got now. Some of these are from the War of Mahabharata. Here we have the Brahmastra. Here we have the Brahmastra, created by Lord Brahma. In Hinduism, the word astra means supernatural tool or weapon. Here's a quote A single projectile charged with all the power in the universe. It was an unknown weapon, an iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death, which reduced to ashes an entire race. There was neither a counterattack or defense that could stop it. 
Okay, here we got the Brahma Shirsha Astra. It is manifested with the four heads of Brahma and is four times more powerful than the Brahmastra. It is uh, said its destruction is what we would compare to the like mushroom bomb that we saw. We're going to keep it Brahma. We have the Brahmanda Astra. Now this weapon was manifested with the whole five heads of Brahma, although he lost his fifth head in a battle with Lord Shiva. This motherfucking Death Star weapon could destroy the entire solar system, or what they would call the 14 realms. Here's a hard word for me to say, the Narayanastra. This was the personal weapon of Lord Vishnu. This weapon is said to have been able to fire deadly flame missiles simultaneously, and the shower of missiles would only be increased when it sensed and was met with resistance. This weapon was only to be used once by a single individual, so if the same person tried to use it again, it would just fire the missiles upon them. Now the fact that these ancient texts talk about fucking missiles is a big red flag, I guess, for me. Not red flag, but fucking green flag for green means go. There was nuclear weapons back way the fuck back then. Now lastly... We have the Pashu Patrastra. This irresistible and most powerful and destructive weapon of Lord Shiva. Its powers can be ignited and discharged by the mind, the eyes, words, or a mighty fucking bow. This weapon is terrifying because it is capable of destroying all of creation and vanquishing all beings. That's everybody. Aliens and all. Everything that's in the fucking universe. It would just decimate. It's noted when the weapon was used, it would summon several larger-than-life monsters as well. So, it you summon it, you use it to destroy shit, and then these big, giant fucking monsters come around and, I guess, take out survivors? I'm not really sure. I really do need to read this whole Sanskrit text translated itself because it's super fucking is interesting as, it, as itself. So that is part one of this series of ancient nuclear weapons in ancient times. I like to say the phrase cosmic war because it sounds so fucking cool. So I like to say ancient cosmic war. But really it's just ancient wars with technology that really doesn't have a reason to exist back then. Especially if we're not even as advanced now. Or are we? Is there technology and military grade shit that we don't fucking know about? Most likely because they lie to us every fucking day. I'm probably gonna get more into the Indian tech stuff because that shit is just so lengthy and so dense. There's so much cool shit with it. I fucking love it. <sighs> Thank you for watching Philosopher's Stones gonna get into this shit real deep during this lockdown bullshit and I want to say rest in peace to my boy Taylor Moran I love you and I miss you brother